the mark visually, okay? Three, two, one, start there. Hi, I'm Charlie Enright, and I'm the skipper of the 11th Hour Racing Team, the only U.S. entry in the ocean race. And the ocean race will sail 60,000 miles around the world, our crew of four on this 60-foot carbon boat in what's the toughest, longest, and most grueling sporting event on the planet. And I'm really honored that you guys had me here today to discuss what we do for ocean health while we're racing around the world. But the Southern Ocean calls and I set off yesterday on the longest leg ever in the race's 50 year history. It's a five week marathon from Cape Town to Itajaí, Brazil. We're supported by 11th Hour Racing, co-founded by Wendy Schmidt, and part of the network of Schmidt Family Foundation organizations, which harness the power of sport to inspire solutions for positive ocean health. As a professional athlete, I have the privilege of my passion being my career. In the past 15 years, I've sailed over 250,000 miles, and this race is my third circumnavigation of the planet. I get to see the ocean in all its glory. Just three weeks ago, I was becalmed in the doldrums as we crawled our way south from Cabo Verde, and for the next five weeks, I'll experience the might of the Southern Ocean. The waves can be 15 meters high, and it can be as cold as minus 15 degrees Celsius while on deck. Our boat might be state-of-the-art, but life on board is very basic. Myself and the four crew live side by side. We hot bunk or sleep on the floor. We eat freeze-dried food rehydrated from boiling water from a kettle on a single burner, and there isn't a bathroom or a toilet. It's definitely not luxurious, but I wouldn't have it any other way. When we race, we get to go into some of the most remote waters of the planet. When we're in the Southern Ocean, we'll pass through Point Nemo, and the closest people to us outside of the race will be the astronauts and the International Space Station. When you sail away from land and head out into the ocean, find yourself hundreds of miles from land, in dark water thousands of meters deep, and you look around you, you can't help but see firsthand that Earth really is an ocean planet. Ocean Race is the only team sport in the world that requires all competitors to take part in a science program that contributes to improving the understanding about the state of our ocean. The race goes through parts of the planet seldom reached by scientific vessels. <laughs> it's very hard to ride these boats. This provides the opportunity to collect vital data directly gathered, giving valuable insights for the scientific community. Ocean Race collects more comprehensive environmental data than any other sporting event in the world. On board our boat Malama, which means to protect and care for Hawaiian, we take our scientific responsibilities very seriously. We don't just carry out science at sea, we aim to leave a positive impact in our wake by partnering at every stopover with organizations committed to improving ocean health. Local solutions to the global problem of climate change. It's our chance to give back to the ocean that sustains us and the planet. At sea, we carry an ocean pack on board. It takes water samples to help assess the impact of climate change on the ocean. One of our team members, our navigator Simon Fisher, studied chemistry at university, and he takes the lead on all scientific things on board. We call these sessions Science with Sci-Fi. Recording some, some important, interesting data, things like uh, Salinity of the sea surface dissolves CO2, and then obviously the sea surface temperature as we go around, and then that all that information can be fed back into a, a much broader data set, which gives us really important information on uh, on the ocean, the climatology, and uh, and this data also can be used in, in things like weather modeling and, and what have you. So essentially, uh, you know, for us. We're getting important data for the science community, but we're also sort of helping ourselves by uh, generating better weather information and, and, and that sort of stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a small, uh, small job to carry this through for a big benefit. We are guided in our work by the Ocean Race's chief scientist, Stefan, to ensure that the data that we are gathering has its greatest impact. Data collected during the race are um, provided to our science partners and those science partners make sure that data are 
analyze quickly and then upload it to uh, open accessible databases. We also gather measurements of trace elements like iron, zinc, copper, and magnesium, which are vital for the growth of plankton, an essential organism as it's the first part of the food chain and one of the ocean's biggest producers of oxygen. One of the things I love is that some of the science we do on board then helps us while we're racing. In the last leg from Cabo Verde to Cape Town, we deployed a drifter buoy at 25 degrees south. The reason why we carry these is we end up in you know pretty remote parts of the world where not many boats or people travel, uh, and it's really important for scientists to have to have the information of the you know the sea temperature, the water currents, the, the waves, etc. in those areas. Um, you know for weather forecasting and rescue eventually, you know, there's, there's lots and lots of things that they, they use the information for. Three, this one was deployed on Sunday, February 5th at 1430 UTC, approximately 800 miles off the coast of Brazil. We carried it on board since the start of the Round the World race back in January. Floyd activated and it'll already be recording data for them, so uh, no, if we go at full speed again. The meteorological and oceanographic data it's capturing is being transmitted hourly by satellite to the Global Ocean Observing System, an international network which provides a glimpse of the state of the ocean to better understand climate change, weather patterns, and much more. And the data comes straight back to us and is used in the weather files that we download on board to plan our race routes. Anyone can view our buoy. All you have to do to search for our WMO is log on to this address and key in our WMO number 540-1601. You can track the 11th Hour Racing Team's buoy, its current position, and see where it's traveled. So for those of us who live near the ocean and work near the ocean, we need to take every opportunity to preserve it. We need to tell stories about the importance of the ocean to people that may not live as close. As a sailor, I'm able to witness the ocean in all its awesome glory, but we need to communicate how important that is to folks that don't live as close to the sea. We have to cultivate our understanding of the ocean, and it's through that understanding that we'll be able to preserve it for generations to come.